the next topic is chelation therapy and, and diseases of circulation. There are hundreds of doctors around the country who do chelation therapy. This therapy was found uh, 30 or more years ago to be quite effective for circulation problems, but it's never been accepted by mainstream medicine. Coronary artery disease and diseases of circulation have many, many causes. And medicine is only coming around to understanding them perhaps 10 or 20 years after the alternative medicine doctors have been understanding them. The causes generally revolve around what's, what are called free radical pathology. Free radicals are molecules that have an unpaired electron and they can scar blood vessels. In fact, they can also scar DNA and lead to cancer and other chronic conditions. Most everybody has heard about antioxidant vitamins. I prefer to call them free radical scavengers. They help the body's defenses against these naturally occurring sparks. Uh, they, these sparks occur all the time, and to me it's analogous to a fire in a fireplace. If, you're, if it's putting out a lot of sparks, those sparks can land on the rug and burn a hole in it. But if you put a big screen in front of the fireplace, it catches those sparks and you don't burn a hole in the rug. Or you can get cleaner burning wood. The antioxidants or the free radical scavengers are like the screen. It catches the sparks before it burns a hole in your rug or your cell. And if you get cleaner burning wood, you put out less sparks. It's my belief that chelation therapy, which is an intravenous approach, uh, with vitamins and minerals and a compound called EDTA, which removes heavy metals, we get cleaner burning wood, less free radical production, and the body then can begin repairing itself from a variety of problems, especially vascular disease. But vascular disease has a lot of other causes that modern medicine, again, is just coming around to looking at, but the average physician doesn't recognize it or doesn't know about it, and he probably will in five or ten years. These include high insulin levels from eating too many carbohydrates. That's one of the biggest causes of vascular disease. Elevated homocysteine. That's a chemical that's related to an inadequate utilization of three B vitamins, B6, B12, and folic acid. It's measurable in blood. High levels of iron. The reason why women are protected from heart disease is not because of ovaries, but because of a the uterus. They shed iron every month. And when they stop doing that, the risk of heart disease catches up to that of men. High levels of iron cause a rusting process in the body, and the iron can be removed very easily and very inexpensively. We all know about cholesterol. It's my opinion that cholesterol is not the bad guy, but it is how cholesterol is used by these other factors in the body. There are Bad, potentially bad forms of cholesterol. This would include certain forms of LDL, low density lipoprotein, certain forms of the LDL, mind you, a compound called apolipoprotein A and lipoprotein B. If these are elevated, a person might have elevated risks for heart disease. Also, lack of the free radical scavengers, uh, lack of exercise, and there are other factors that deserve to be looked at. Chronic inflammation, which can cause arterial disease, and elevated clotting capacity of the blood. All of these can be measured objectively and modified to reduce a person's risk of vascular disease. And chelation therapy is one of the best treatments to modify most of the risk factors, but not all of them.